<laughs> and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on ivan on tech we are of course broadcasting live straight out of stockholm sweden and we do this show each and every day at 8 a.m central european summertime guys i come to you like an atomic clock each and every day today we have so much to discuss today is going to be an epic stream of epic proportions because we're going to talk about bitcoin dominance and bitcoin market cap because at the end of the day, the market cap measurement is very flawed and the official market cap measurement of Bitcoin today is 70% of the entire crypto market. You look at coin market cap and you look at Bitcoin dominance, you will see that it is at 70%. But in reality, it is way higher. In reality, it is around 90%. And today I will tell you why. And today I will tell you why it is important to take a step further and look a step deeper. That is number one. Number two, we're going to discuss this notion of internet money and really the global currency that Bitcoin is becoming, especially now that altcoins have really died out during the past year. At the same time, we should not discount altcoins altogether because altcoins do have a great chance of coming back. And this is something also that we will be discussing today because altcoins are really built into the human nature and you will understand why. If you understand human psychology, you understand why altcoins coins will come back and it is very exciting and it's very important to understand how people are thinking and how they are engaging in markets and actually it's way more about psychology than about fundamental value or any value at all as you will see but guys all of that and more in the stream we're gonna do a q a afterwards as usual but before we get into that number one smash that like up right now number two smash that bell up right now as, as well and uh, welcome 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 everyone i see cardano green i see andrews i see bernard kangers i see mad cow everyone very very welcome let me know where you're coming from by the way as well which country and what you're drinking today we're drinking drinking black coffee guys no milk no sugar involved and first of all we will be taking a look at the market cap as usual the market cap is green today so if you're long perfect 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 especially since we were down so much in the past few days it's very good to see some green numbers we see bitcoin at 1.5 percent we see Ethereum at 3%, uh, Ripple at 2%, so all in all, very green day, especially, by the way, for Ethereum Classic. Let me know if you're holding Ethereum Classic or not, because Ethereum Classic is killing it at 18%. Honestly, I haven't seen anyone use Ethereum Classic. Uh, the good news they had is that uh, they are on CoinMarketCap, oh, sorry, on, on Coinbase, which is, uh, which is good, but all in all, uh, I haven't seen a lot of projects using Ethereum Classic, but hey, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how everything develops. Look Looking at the big winners, we do see a crazy winner with 201%. Beware of the dump, but if you manage to catch this pump, amazing for you. Uh, Ethereum Classic, we already mentioned that. Icon, 16%. Uh, also interesting to see some projects on Icon, not a lot of big projects to be honest with you, not a lot of big projects at all, but hey, maybe it's all only the early days. Engine, some people are uh, trying to issue assets on Engine now that they've opened up their SDKs more and more, and you know that we had Unity course on Engine as well, so still not a lot of big things, but many people are at least starting to build and experiment, and now really is the time for Engine to show its uh, capabilities, and Grisha, I, uh, our favorite uh, uh, pumping and dumping coin <laughs> that we follow all the time uh, it, it's usually number one in dumping number one in pumping but today it is kind of in the middle let's see let's see on 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 the scale right here yeah so as you can see you see the stick see the stick upwards right there perfect perfect for investors but uh, definitely a very big pump and then an amazing dump now also, guys, uh, as you know, our markets are highly volatile and it is good right now because you can both short and long. If you haven't tried Bybit, definitely do that. You can get $60 for free if you deposit 0.2 Bitcoin into Bybit. You can short, you can long, you can do uh, leverage if you want to, but be very careful. And you can do this with Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS and XRP. So definitely do, do use the link below if you're interested. And also, guys, we do have a free webinar coming up. You know that we haven't done this webinar since quite 
quite some time and a lot of people are asking that we should do them again. If you have been in this webinar, you don't need to attend again because it's going to be the same, but still many people haven't. So what we're going to discuss are basically three things. How to make money without risky investments in crypto, because at the end of the day, you need to be useful in crypto and I'm going to show you how to do that. Number two, how to build wealth in crypto in any market, whether it's up, down, sideways, and also how to build a career without being a developer. So definitely check it out in the description. Okay, guys, let's start talking about the most important thing of the day, namely the market cap, namely the fact that when you look at the market cap on coin on coin market cap, it is a, a very bad metric and it is a very bad metric for several reasons. But let me show you a clear example why you, you should be very careful with market cap and why the real market cap of Bitcoin is 90% of the entire crypto market. The real dominance of Bitcoin is approximately 90%. So looking at uh, a coin, let's say that you and I, we create some kind of coin. Let's say we call it um, uh, Smashy Smash, as we, you know, Smashy Smash is our coin we created way in the, way in the past, <laughs> like a year ago. So let's imagine we, we issue this coin called Smashy Smash, and um, you know that we, we have a uh, cir circulating supply of 1 million tokens. So all in all, we do 1 million of these tokens, okay? And obviously they're worthless. I mean, we haven't done anything with them. It is just uh, tokens that you can transfer and that's really it. But you understand that the market cap is based on the on the last trade basically. So if we're able to send to sell one smashy smash for one dollar to someone, maybe I, I sell it to my neighbor or whatever, suddenly our, you know, our market cap suddenly becomes $1 million because the price, the, the last trade of our token is $1. So the price of our token is $1. And uh, obviously our supply is 1 million. So uh, the price times the uh, circulating supply, it will be $1 million. I mean, obviously is it circulating? Is it not really circulating? Here's where the big question is because at the end of the day, it's all about liquidity. Obviously, if I only, if we only send this one token to our neighbor and we somehow tricked him into buying it for one dollar, we have a very illiquid market. I mean, even if you have a billion of these smashy smash, you cannot sell them anywhere. So it's all about liquidity at the end of the day. And this is, by the way, what these guys over at Crypto Grofen, I, I guess they're Norwegian or Swedish because it's like a Swedish slash Norwegian, Scandinavian name. And so what they have researched is uh, how big the market cap of Bitcoin is, uh, or more correctly, how big the dominance of Bitcoin is, if we do not blindly look at the price compared to the supply, but we also take into account the volume. Because just price and supply is worthless. I mean, as you can see, you can really trick it a lot and you can really play with the numbers a lot and so what they have researched is uh, is the following here is the current the current dominance of bitcoin approximately 70 percent and the gray chart right here the gray the gray bar is stable coins excluded and green bar is with stable coins. But for the sake of it, of it we exclude the, the stable coins because they don't really matter in this calculation. I mean, yes, a stable coin could have the biggest market cap, but it doesn't matter. It, it, they're not part of the true cryptocurrency, so to speak. So we look at the gray bars right here and not at the green ones. So currently we are at about 70% according to official numbers on coin market caps. Yeah, so right now it's 68.5. Um, but if you take into account the volume and you look at the coin market cap and you see all of the coins, but instead of just multiplying the price with supply, you also factoring the volume, suddenly Bitcoin is at 90% because Bitcoin is so much more ahead in terms of volume compared to all other coins that we easily go from 70-ish uh, to 90%. Very, very important. And also it depends on where you look. If you look at Coinbase, you get 90% um, uh, dominance for Bitcoin. You look at Bitwise and other platforms, you might get other numbers. But so these guys in doing the research, they also include Bitwise, but it is also around 90% dominance here. So all in all, this is very important to keep in mind. Uh, and uh, when you're looking at different coins, please factor in the liquidity because the market cap is garbage if you cannot do it, do anything with it, if you can easily destroy it by dumping a bunch of coins. So liquidity is very important. And I think we should change the way we measure things. 
in crypto and market cap is such a big measurement that we use all the time so therefore something to keep in mind for sure and finally i think it's very interesting that they mentioned that you know bitcoin is the best positioned is best positioned to become the money of the internet and obviously we're talking about the network effect obviously we're talking about the fact that so many people believe in bitcoin and think that it is digital gold a lot i mean it's not that much about technology because on a technical level, you have so many other coins as well, like Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, basically being identical. But it's not that much about technology at the end of the day. What really sets a cryptocurrency apart is social consensus, what people believe in. And this is very, very true because technologically, you can just copy paste Bitcoin source code. But the network effect obviously will not follow. And the network effect comes from the social consensus, from adoption and so on and so forth. So definitely something to keep in mind. And also they say that, hey, uh, in history, history has shown that network effects often trump specialization. So this is an argument against altcoins. And soon I will give you arguments for altcoins. But the argument against altcoins is the fact that when you have a general platform and it gets a lot of network effect, it will trump everything else. So general platforms like wide adoption, general platforms with wide adoption might be used for everything, like the internet. Nowhere are the network effects stronger than for money where liquidity is everything so they're basically saying hey you might have some projects telling you that they do some kind of niche specialized thing and that they're better in bitcoin uh, than they're better than bitcoin in that particular niche but it doesn't matter because special because general platforms often beat specialized platforms and especially in money because liquidity is so important and also you do see people such as you know, Andrew Yang, that is, by the way, why he's in the in the thumbnail. Many people were asking, who is this Asian guy? Well, this Asian guy is one of the presidential candidates. And it's very interesting that he's also talking about Bitcoin sometimes. I think, you know, his approach to his campaign is to be this tech guy because he's from tech. He, his background is in tech. He talks a lot about AI, artificial intelligence, universal, uh, universal basic income, how technology is going to change our society. And I think that is why he, I mean, he's attracting people from both sides because even if you're conservative, you are a liberal, doesn't matter. You still kind of see that he talks about things that nobody else talks about and especially about crypto. So he recently said that my vision for of the economy is very consistent with the people who are in the cryptocurrency community saying that it should be freed up, it should be more transparent, and so on and so forth. And also saying that sometimes people call me a futurist, but I believe I'm a presentist. It's just that most politicians are stuck in the past. And, you know, I agree I agree with that. Nobody talks about the future, nobody talks about uh, the present in the same way that this guy does, but at the same time, we'll see if he even has a chance <laughs> against the established players. I see some... Um, uh, I see, Yeah, th this guy, Ian. Hey, hey bro. Uh, M Michael Trout. Shout out, shout out. We had a debate the other day. Uh, anyway, so uh, just an interesting thought to this in regards to Bitcoin being the uh, money of the internet and also politicians picking up this narrative of technology and bringing it to the public debate. Now, of course, uh, Andrew is a politician. So, you know, he says something, does it really mean anything? Who knows? Who knows, who knows, who knows? But still, bringing it to the public debate is important. As long as he brings it to the public debate, I don't care if he does anything with it. Just bring it to mainstream media, bring it to national television, make people understand what we're talking about here. And then, you know, recently he also had some kind of thought about blockchain for voting, but th that doesn't really matter. What matters is Bitcoin and the world money. So that, that is very important. Also, guys, before we move on to altcoins, because I promised you to talk about why altcoins might have a comeback and why human psychology is really for altcoins, as you will soon see, we as humans, our greed basically will pump up altcoins, but I, I will get into that very soon. I thought this is a very important tweet that everyone should read like a thousand times. So it's, it's uh, once again about Bitcoin. This is from Misir Mahmudov saying the following. Time is the currency of life. And this is true. Your time, you never get it back. You can get back anything, but the uh, time, never get it back. So if some, somebody wastes your time, they're murdering part of your life. A micro-murder, basically. Micro-murder, okay? So, you know, if you're, you, you have a meeting and the guy is late, he, he killed a few minutes of your life. 
Uh, and this is something I think we all should be thinking about. Do not waste other people's time. If your wealth loses value, your scarce time is stolen. So this is maybe the most important thing. In so many countries, by the way, including Sweden, wealth is uh, quietly, you know, it's kind of quietly taken away from the Swedish people uh, because the currency is devaluing. And yes, it is good for the industry. You know, we can do more export this and that, but you know, did anyone ask the average guy? Because the Swedish crown went from 6 to 9.6. Uh, if you compare it to a dollar, I mean, it is basically 50% loss. I mean, we went like three, three crowns up from 6 to 9. So all in all, uh, nobody asked the average guy. And yes, the arguments are it's good for the economy, good for expert, boom, 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 boom. But how many people have a lot of money in fiat? A lot of people. So Definitely something to keep in mind. So when all of this is happening, what is actually happening are micro murders. So uh, how many uh, hours of labor ha have been killed here that people have uh, have invested in their savings? And now, you know, we went from six to nine in just a few years. Yeah, in eight years, completely slaughtered wealth. Uh, very, very sad. So we see, we've seen a lot of micro murders in, uh, in Sweden in that regard. So if your wealth loses value, your scarce time is stolen. Very important. Bitcoin is the only thing just as scarce as time. Bitcoin is the only antidote against uh, time theft. And this is, of course, I mean, Sweden is an example, but, you know, Venezuela is your biggest example. That with minimum wage in Venezuela, you need to work 208 years to get one single Bitcoin. One single Bitcoin. And uh, therefore, you need to put it in perspective. How many micro, uh, micro murders ha have happened there? A lot, a lot, a lot. So definitely something to keep in mind, guys. Uh, let's see. We, we have another di dimension. Uh, dimension donation. I'm talking too much about the, you know I I inter I interdimensional travels in my free time. So I always thinking dimension. Anyway, Bitcoin cannot be currency. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so guys, you know, don't use the the donations to shield coins. Like uh, I, I will not read them. But uh, I just told you about network effects and this and that. Anyway, thank you for the donation. But uh, whether it's written in JavaScript or whatever, that, that does its technical implementation detail. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, I want to discuss with you a few things uh, before we go into Q&A. <clears throat> I want to discuss with you this. Why altcoins might come back, why altcoins probably will come back, and why an old season will probably happen, in my view. In my view, it will happen. So, you know, you look at 2017, we did see Bitcoin breaking away from alts, and it was pulling ahead a lot, a lot, a lot. So Bitcoin was skyrocketing, everything else wasn't really skyrocketing. Then we reached all-time high in 2017. It was early 2017. We just broke 1K in Bitcoin, okay? So uh, when, when that happened, people started to uh, diversify, to cash out to, from Bitcoin to Ether and ICOs and so forth. So basically, this article says that, hey, maybe so something similar will happen, that Bitcoin breaks all-time highs, quality alternative projects start to receive attention and recognition, and then the money will flow in uh, other directions. But, you know, this is all good, but this doesn't really make the entire argument. There are so many objections to this argument that, you know, people will diversify. But once again, it comes back to the psychology we humans were so greedy also we're we're status seeking monkeys and so when we see our neighbors get rich on something our status goes down compared to the neighbor and you know our status seeking monkey instinct will try to bring it back up and obviously if your neighbor got rich in bitcoin and you see that Bitcoin has already topped and it's very difficult and risky to, to invest in it in, in regards to your return, uh, you will try to get some in, into some other altcoin because it might 100x, 1000 I mean, we've seen crazy examples. So there are a few objections that I think is uh, really, really important. Number one, objections why old season might not happen. So th that is that investors are smarter now, they won't invest in altcoins, okay? Uh, but the thing is, um, it's all about greed. So it doesn't matter how smart you are, humans are greedy. So if you are a Bitcoin investor, you're a notion of a, a you're not, uh, oh my God, he doesn't even know how to write. So see, this should be your, not you are. So if you are a Bitcoin investor, your notion of a Bitcoin bull market was correct. You've now, uh, you've now got a larger pot of disposable income. And then you will probably diversify because last time you witnessed a Bitcoin bull run, altcoins also surged a lot. So it's just a, a human psychology thing that probably this will happen again. 
And I also liked the, the fact that they said, hey, the, uh, when you're saying that investors are getting smarter and that old season will not happen again, it's like saying that uh, a recession will never happen again because now investors are smarter and obviously nobody is going to pump up the stock market again and create another bubble in the stock market on, or real estate or whatever other market because investors are smarter now. But greed always goes before your smartness. So when the market is greedy, doesn't matter if they are smart. They will pump up anything and they will create new recessions over and over again. Uh, so uh, Bitcoin will take up most, if not all, the market share. And once again, it's about human, uh, human greed. And while this notion might come to fruition in 10, uh, 20 years down the line, we're still very early in Bitcoin and altcoin cycle. So we're just at one one maybe 1.5 percent adoption just people who have tried using cryptocurrencies who have tried holding cryptocurrencies so definitely in the future we might see bitcoin being the stable dominant currency but in the short term there are still so many uh, so many cycles that might happen with alts versus bitcoin uh pumps so definitely something to keep in mind to keep in mind the next objection is that retail investors have been burned they won't invest in crypto again and once again investors that looked for ways of for, for get, getting rich quick will do the same. They are opportunists and they will take any opportunity without looking at fundamentals, by the way. And once again, we're only at 1.5% adoption. Imagine how many people still haven't experienced a, an old season and know what it is. And uh, he says that I can write down a huge list of friends that will be looking to get back once Bitcoin gets back to all time high. And it is true. Once we reach 20K, I promise you, all your random friends from high school and everywhere will be writing to you because th this is what happens to me all you know each time bitcoin pumps suddenly you get all of these messages from people you don't you hardly know them but you went like in kindergarten once upon a time and now they're asking hey what do you think about xrp uh, i heard xrp is a good pick what do you think about tron <laughs> it really becomes interesting and funny because they get attention on crypto, they see that Bitcoin has already pumped and now they are trying to find their opportunity. And once again, historical performance not in indicative of future performance. And uh, this is like saying that a recession will never happen again uh, in, in many cases. Bitcoin is only 10 years old, old coins are even younger. The market is largely speculative. Thus, price performance is still incredibly sensitive to human emotion. Uh, human intellect basically and uh, you, you understand that also the level of uh, of sophistication of crypto investors compared to normal markets is still is still uh, low and so what do we mean by investor sophistication well it means how people are thinking about their investments it means what kind of portfolio theory you're following i mean many people just go on emotions they go all in on some altcoin and that's it uh, in the big markets where you have institutional investors, obviously it's way more complicated and they, they, they make their decisions in a, in a very different way. But because we're mostly retail investors here, I mean, we are not professional investors. We're not working with this all the time. So our level of sophistication is way lower, lower than professional uh, asset managers. And we do not have a lot of asset managers right now in crypto. If you compare to traditional markets, we're so small still. So this is also why our market is even more is even more sensitive to human emotion because we're all emotional here. All in all, guys, this is the case for alts. This is the case for alts. And uh, let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. But uh, I do think that there is a lot of merit to it. At the same time, I don't think that we will see the same the same kind of alt season because the magic is not there. I, I mean, if you think to 2017. Let me know if you, by the way, guys, if you were in uh, 2017 in this market. I mean, if, if you're thinking about 2017, these times were, I mean, it was magical times. And I'm saying that because, you know, people discovered ICOs and you could launch your own token and, you know, all of these promises and green, uh, you know, green future on... Um, it was such a magical time for so many people because they were genuinely interested in learning about everything. Now, it, you know, you get into crypto, you, you it's basically Bitcoin now. It's basically Bitcoin. Maybe we will see another such magical period of time where people really can make a case and uh, this time deliver on it. Because although a lot of technology was very interesting, practically not a lot has been delivered. So this magic obviously died down because you cannot really be in the magical times all the time without seeing the result.
But is it possible to create this aura of magic again? Maybe, but it's not here. It's not here uh, yet. So therefore, the greed might still create an, a, a significant old season, but uh, the magic that was here in 2017 is not here according to me now. Maybe it will come back. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see, guys. Uh, and this is why education is so important. Because obviously, if you've been in um, old seasons before, you realize how uh, how dangerous they are and uh, how, how careful you should be. So you should always try to to educate newbies and for the way by the way they should be watching this video and understand that greed drives this uh, this industry to a large extent so they don't get burned okay finally guys before q a i want to get into this the fact that coinbase will allow you to access dApps through their platform this is very interesting because obviously they control your private keys when you use coinbase and it's an interesting pivot they're making, basically allowing you to interact with smart contracts and other dApps through their platform. Uh, because obviously they have so many coins now. They have Ether, they have Tezos, they have Chainlink. So you can really, you know, if you have funds on Coinbase and they make it easy for you to interact with all of the smart contracts, I think they can have a very, very good position in the market. And this is really maybe the next generation of crypto exchanges. Crypto exchanges that do allow you to interact with DeFi and also with whatever uh, dApp you want. So I, I think it is very interesting. I think it is very exciting. But still, we haven't seen anything practical um, yet, 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 yet. But maybe this is going to be significant. Anyway, guys, anyway, guys, my rant is over. I will pull up the chat. I will drink some coffee and I will look in the chat. Welcome, everyone. Amazing. Man, I love the chat. So what's happening in the chat? Uh, I, I were looking at sideline on Altona. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Ivan on tech still needs a tan. Summer will uh, true, true. <laughs> I need a tan, but I can also use uh, I can also use OBS to give me a tan. You know, in the past I it changed some settings on this uh, video camera and and you get tanned. It's very good. It's very good. I like your accent. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Um, it, it has developed over time, and it, it, my accent it doesn't belong to any country. Like uh, you, you will never you will never hear anyone speaking in the way I do. Because it's a bit of Belarusian, Russian, Swedish, American. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I don't really know what it is. Good morning from Leeds. How's your good? Very good. Thank you, sir. Very good. Uh, can stolen Bitcoin be laundered into Satoshis in third world countries with less regulation? Uh, I mean, why not? It's all about uh, what kind of uh, monitoring the different exchanges have. Because, I mean, obviously the big exchanges, they all have some kind of monitoring going on. And if, if a hack happens, suddenly their monitoring system will follow all of the addresses. And if you try, if the, if the hackers try to deposit their stolen amounts or st stolen funds on exchange, you will see these monitoring systems basically alarming, uh, alarming the exchange and the exchange will say, we don't accept you. And by the way, also, we might report you to the authorities. So this is very important. And in third world countries, absolutely, if they don't have regulation, they just want Bitcoin. Uh, absolutely. Uh, maybe that is uh, what they're doing, by the way. Maybe that is, by the way, the, the way to uh, for them to do anything with their money. But it is also good in one way because they cannot dump on uh, on our markets because many people were scared about this plus token, you know, uh, exit scam. And many people were worried that, you know, they moved $240 million in a few minutes. And uh, you realize that they cannot really cash it out uh, and dump on the market. Maybe they can cash it out in developing countries, but the liquidity is there is very small. So we'll see. We'll see, guys. Uh, Ivan, open... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So th see, this is the definition of a scam. 10% daily return. If you see that anywhere, be very careful, guys. What do you think about mining in general and companies that are mining and connected to traditional stock market? I'm not sure what you mean. How, how are they mining and they're connected to trade? You mean like publicly listed companies? that are mining, I mean, it's perfect if they can find the ways to be profitable, really. It's amazing if they can do that. And uh, I, I think many, many companies are discovering ways to do mining in a good way and to util and most importantly, utilize energy in a good way. Because um, I think you should ch uh, check out the Bitcoin standard. And I think uh, there is a very good point there because you realize right now energy needs to be transported in order to be used. So 
you have energy sources such as you know a river uh, or maybe you have like wave energy or a, a nuclear plant or whatever but it all needs to be transported and he here is where a lot of energy is being lost in transport uh, and uh, here is where a lot of cost is also occurring in transport but with crypto mining you can just go to a river if you can somehow capture energy here you don't need to transport anywhere you just plug in your machine right here to your generator and you mine and you and you consume energy on the spot so i think this is the opportunity for energy use in crypto and this is why uh, a, a crypto mining can be the greenest by the way the greenest way to spend energy ever because you just go to a river if you manage to plug it in somehow and generate electricity from here Amazing, amazing. So transport is a very big thing. The fact that in crypto mining, you can consume energy on the spot. Many people are not thinking about that. What do you think about uh, Willy Woo's analysis that might be a bottom for... Uh, yeah, so I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. And uh, I think it makes sense in many ways, especially about uh, the greed, the things which we talked about just right now. I mean, all of this. It makes sense, but I think actually it will take... We need to see another all-time high in Bitcoin for alts to really make a comeback. But it could be the case that they just stab stabilize and, st and stop dropping that much in comparison to, to Bitcoin. Uh, uh, plug right, right, <laughs> right, no, you just plug it into the river. <laughs> uh, not green, f yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, but you get my idea, you get my idea. Because you can eliminate transport, you can make it 100 times greener than everything else. But yeah, you need to figure out a way to... Uh, to, to do it without harming the fish. Are you angel investor with... Yeah, so as, as I mentioned, we are working with Tixel. And it's mainly because of their uh, privacy uh, privacy efforts. And, you know, we worked with Resistance in the past as well with on, on privacy. Uh, green mining energy... Uh, what are you talking about? H how is that energy wastage? Well, hey, Ivan, what's the best open source app for crypto algorithmic trading? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I haven't used any open source. Uh, and really, I'm not using algorithmic trading either. And when it comes to, you see, too many people have a, a bit of a lazy mindset where they think that I just need to find the bot and it will do everything for me. So they're looking for just someone to give them a program that will trade and make money. But the reality is way harsher, unfortunately. And I think you need to learn on your own. I, I mean, I saw a great course uh, on, on Python. Let me see if I can find it. Python algo trading. You need to understand how this works uh, on your own. Uh, man, I cannot find it now. It was a great, like, it was something on K... Anyway, anyway. Uh, there are a lot of good educational courses on this, and in order to be in control of your algo trading, you need to understand how it's working yourself, in my view, in my view. Because you will never find anywhere a just, you know, a piece of code you plug into your Binance and it makes you free money. <clears throat> I don't think it's a good idea because the markets change and, you know, in order to make money in the markets, you need to have an edge and the edge will probably change and you need to stay up to date with everything that is happening. Uh, like Iceland, energy or if strong tea, windmills, temporary times. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. So it needs to be a place with uh, a lot of green energy and because you don't need to transfer it, you, you can consume it on the spot. Can you explain what makes Bitcoin valuable? Man, rewatch the video. We, we mentioned, uh, like, in the uh, first minutes, we talked about uh, social consensus and why t on the tech level, it doesn't matter, but on the social consensus level, level, it does matter a lot. But we already discussed it today. I, I don't want to repeat it, but it's, it's about social consensus. It's about social consensus. Uh, I want to hear Ivan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we just discussed it. Uh, uh, how many different protocols are you investing in? Don't don't wanna uh, know which. Not a lot, man. Not a lot. Uh, I mean, the vast majority. Uh, see, the good thing with uh, um, investing in Sweden is that you do have uh, a special account that you can use at your brokerage, so that you don't even have to pay a lot of tax. So that is why you know in Sweden, you if you're living, by the way, here you should be using uh, ISK. Like it's an investment savings account. And with this, you get so little tax. It's basically 0%. And so therefore, it's a good idea to be, to be thinking about the fact, okay, do I need real Bitcoin? Which is, of course, the best way to invest you can, if you can get real Bitcoin. But here it will be 30% tax. Uh, or maybe you can get like real Litecoin or something else. But here is 30%. Or you can get like paper Bitcoin and paper crypto in ESK, and here is 0%. 
So I think this is the biggest question everyone in Sweden needs to ask. And the thing with this is that they have like the biggest ones, like Bitcoin, they have Litecoin, they have, uh, I, th I think, yeah, they have ETH as well, and not a lot of uh, others. And also like, I'm not, you know, being in crypto already is so much risk. I mean, it's a lot of risk if you look in the short term. In the long term, I think if you're not in crypto, you're taking a lot of risk. But in the short term, it's a lot of risk. So like, I'm not a fan of buying crazy altcoins, guys. Uh, uh, I'm really not. So it's very, very seldom. And usually I try to get those that I can have in ISK because, you know, this is extremely, extremely lucrative. Although, although it's not real, like it's not real, a, a real crypto. But if you want real crypto, of course, then you need to be, I mean, either live in Singapore. I mean, if you live there, then you really have no excuse not to have real Bitcoin or maybe you live in Hong Kong or other places. Uh, but if you're not, you definitely need to check out if your country offers some other way to avoid paying 30% because you don't want to do that. Uh, yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, would love to see you on Uptrend. So Uptrend is like decentralized YouTube or something, right? Uh, yeah. If it's easy, then... Are Germans, Germany leading the way for Bitcoin adoption? So look, I, I think, by the way, in Germany, I heard some interesting news about German taxation. That in, I, I don't know if it is true, by the way, but what, from what I've heard, my friends from Germany told me, if you hodl for two years your crypto, you don't pay any tax. So th this is quite interesting in Germany. <laughs> Basically, they want to incentivize they want to incentivize you to hodl. So th this is quite interesting. This is quite interesting. Uh, Bitcoin, yes, yes, yes. Ivan, what do you think about Taproot? Uh, you know, I, I think it's one of the biggest things that, that are coming to crypto in the near future. Uh, I, but uh, at the same time, we really need to have more innovation on Bitcoin, in my view. And Taproot is, of course, highly connected to, to Bitcoin. And uh, I think both, uh, we need to get uh, Schnorr signatures, we need to get Taproot, and a lot has to do, of course, with privacy. And I think, therefore, it is important. Uh, are people using BISC decentralized exchange with no middleman? Haven't tried, haven't tried, man. Send single use XO and do not combine them together, says Quartic. Uh, uh, hey, Ivan, does Bitcoin private allow money? Uh, man, I, I haven't been following Bitcoin private, but I know they had a lot of uh, co like controversies, but um, uh, I don't know. Like crypto is generally very bad for money laundering because everything is on the blockchain. Yes, with Monero, uh, you could try to hide it, but even Fluffy Pony, you know, the main developer of, uh, of Monero said that, hey, you should probably not be doing anything, uh, you know, fishy with it. Uh, because at the end of the day, there are many companies right now that are sniffing all internet communication. And for now, it's encrypted. Like, they're just sniffing everything that is going on. And for now, it is completely encrypted, okay? But in the future, we might have ways to decrypt that. So as long as you're just storing everything you see on the internet, as long as you're just storing all the communications that are going on, I mean, in the future, you might have all this data that is encrypted today. There is no way to decrypt it right now, but in the future, it might be possible. So definitely something to keep in mind. And I think you should, if you haven't, I think you definitely should uh, watch my intro with Fluffy Pony. Uh, I, I will show it to you right here because we talk about this. We talk about this. Fluffy Pony Ivan on tech. Uh, so therefore, I mean, crypto in general, I don't think it's a, such a good use case for um, uh, for that kind of stuff. So yeah, check this out. Uh, Monero versus Bitcoin, EOS scam, bear market. And it's very funny because his dogs basically co come in the middle and yeah, <laughs> check it out. Check it out. It, it was it was amazing interview. Uh, what do we have more? Uh, BISC, okay, more BISC action. Ivan, oh, Cardano Green, what's up, man? Ivan, what is more likely? By the way, Cardano, I'm gonna make you moderator. You're you're very active in our channel. Let's see, bam. Okay, so uh, Cardano says, um, uh, what is more, more likely in five years? Bitcoin gains to 95% dominance or uh, Bitcoin less than 60? So see, I, I like this question because it's more long term. And um, I, I would say we would be around, I mean, right now we're about 90%. If you look with volume, it depends on how you're also, which numbers you're using. Is this with volume or without volume? Because this whole video was about that. If you look at volume, Bitcoin dominance is at 90%. But my guess would be, because it's anyone's guess really, but I would still see that altcoins are existing 
and uh, we are at about 85% uh, Bitcoin, 15% uh, altcoins. Because altcoins will always exist because of human greed, as we mentioned. Some of them will be very useful as well. But uh, also looking at the big money that is going in, they're not going to go into alt. They're absolutely not going to go into alt. They're going to go into build Bitcoin, at least in the if you look at uh, five years into the future. Uh, so th therefore, I do think that it will mostly favor uh, alt. Uh, sorry, favor Bitcoin. And now I'm talking about market cap in, without volume. Because with volume already right now, we are at 90. So I'm, I'm talking about the, you know, the classic way of measuring market cap where you just take price times uh, uh, supply. What is your type? My, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't put it into category. It's Ivan on tech humor. That is why you come here, by the way. You, you come to Ivan on tech. For Ivan, <laughs> for Ivan on tech humor. Does your lipstick come in? Yeah, man. So uh, ch ch look in um, in YouTube. We discussed lip lipstick as well. But uh, you, you can. Yeah, I, I will show it to you. <laughs> this has been a topic or on this channel for, for a long, very long time. I even created a video on this. I even take lipstick. So if you want more information on that, uh, check this out. Exposed, see, I'm exposed guys, yeah, completely exposed. So, and, and by the way, lipstick and makeup. So, <laughs> and this was a year ago, definitely check it out. Of course, we're long-term bullish, but what is the biggest thing stopping Bitcoin from getting to 100K? Uh, new money, uh, absolutely new money. That is the only thing. We just discussed it yesterday, by the way. To reach 60K, we need $80 billion entering crypto, just to reach, to, to reach 60K. To reach 100, well, we need a bit over, you know, 150 billion. So definitely something to keep, uh, to keep in mind. Hey, Ivan, what's pumping Ethereum Classic? Who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, oh, because I told you in the beginning that they were pumping, but you don't see a lot of like projects and uh, uh, and other activity on Ethereum Classic. So it's really anyone's guess. And with small uh, alts like Ethereum Classic, a anything is possible. A a anything is possible, really. But we'll see how it develops because still, I, I know some people that are interested in developing DApp, so they're, they're asking around, should we use Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, but I mean, nobody is really using it. Uh, so I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I was impressed by Ripple's partnerships. Uh, uh, not sure. Uh, I think the Ripple uh, Corporation is doing a great job, but the question is about their token. Is XRP going to be used? But uh, El Digo de la Gota is very bullish on it, <laughs> as you can see by the chart right here. Ivan, you're cool. Nice. nice. Th th thanks, Stefan. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, how will Fed coin affect <laughs> Ivan? Where is my blue spa? <laughs> right, right. That's true. That's true. Okay, I'm gonna make you moderator too, but this is the last one, guys. We, uh, otherwise, we're gonna see inflated supply of moderators. I, I, do, I don't want to see an inflated supply. We need to keep supply low, okay? So yeah, but Mad Cow has been around for a very long, <laughs> very long time. <laughs> Uh, uh, do you like Thunder token? Um, I did a video on it, but since then I haven't really been following it, to be honest with you. Uh, so um, I, I think, it, I mean, it's a, I, I guess it's a good proposal to increase the speed on um, on Ethereum, but uh, at the same time, it's 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 kind of close to Ethereum as well. It's not a lot different, to, to be honest with you. Uh, and Ethereum has so much momentum and uh, network effect that uh, I, I, I don't know if people will care about Thunder, but maybe. And for you know, for someone to care about a new thing and to switch to a new thing, it needs to be ten times better, not just you know a bit better, uh, to, in order to ca counteract the network effect. So this is something to keep in mind. Uh, one chain pumping. Uh, not sure. This is crypto, man. You never know. You never know. You maybe some people have theories, but it's all random. In many cases, all random. Uh, yes, mad cow going wild. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you see, th this blue thing, it's way more important than Twitter blue check mark. So th definitely something to realize. But I don't want to inflate it. Uh, moderator, yeah, exactly. exactly. We, we see a lot of dump in moderator value. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, guys, uh, who is the next interview? Uh, I mean, interview either box mining, because a lot of China action is happening. Maybe Da Vinci, we have been talking about setting something up. Um, who else? Let me know if you want someone. I I'll take it out. But please don't uh, don't pump some kind of to just for the sake of pu pumping your favorite coin. Uh, give me someone who is you know really interesting. 
Uh, I've been... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The channel didn't even exist that, <laughs> that long ago. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. It was amazing as always. Really, it's really, really fun to hang out with you guys. You're completely insane. Completely crazy chat. And this is the best thing of the channel, of course. So have a great, great Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Really make the most out of it. Let me know if you're smarter, by the way, than, than when you started. Yeah, let me know if you learned something. And uh, yeah, Richard Hart, right. Bitcoin and friends creator. Actually, yeah, I need to answer them. They emailed me. I need to answer them. But these guys I have contact with. But I will see you guys on Monday. I'll see you guys Monday, 8 a.m. Have a great, great day. And goodbye, guys. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.